Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship with a video diary update, probably a very long overdue video diary update. It's the 17th of October, it's been a while, I've been rather busy and I'm thankful that I'm busy at the moment um, with everything that's going on in the world. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, this um, kind of expanded um, training I'm doing, a sort of cross between training and coaching with a, a client that I'm working with at the moment. Um, and it's been a while since I've had a chance to do this with a client because most companies are not willing, uh, sadly, to make that kind of investment. Um, but what, what's happening here is I'm essentially covering the same topics that we cover in our three-day Codecraft course, but it's very expanded with a lot more time uh, for practical exercises. And we're going to talk a little bit about the exercise we're working on at the moment in a minute. Um, and a lot more attention from me. So normally on a training course you might have eight or 12 people in the group and we've got three days and there's only one of me so that's one of me between you know a bunch of people um what we're doing with this client is we're working in pairs so there's a pair of them and me in a three-hour coaching session session there's going to be 10 of those sessions 10 modules if you like um, they watch a video the videos that i posted um on this on this youtube channel were designed for that so they watch a video about the kind of the topic that we're going to be focusing on in that particular session um, before the session. So the whole three hours is dedicated to actually doing it, working in pairs with, with input from me. So it's very expanded. Each developer gets a lot more attention from me. Um, it's not cheap, I won't, I won't lie. Um, uh, you know, a three-day training course costs a certain amount, um, but 30 hours of coaching costs a, a lot more per developer although we're doing it in pairs, so I guess it's 15 hours per developer. So it, it represents quite a significant investment, um, but it does um, have a much larger effect and tends to have that effect much faster. Um, so if you're very serious about your investment in your developer skills, I highly recommend you, you get in touch and talk about this kind of expanded coaching, either from me or from one of my many um, very capable associates. Um, because it's a, it's a different approach to training that, that brings a lot more focus to each individual and gives them a lot more time to kind of expand on these topics. The problem with a three-day co training course is we're very limited in, in how complex and kind of real-world or realistic the examples can be. They tend to be very self-contained because we have to complete them in an hour or so. Um, for this, we can do examples that span multiple sessions, multiple hours, many hours, so they can actually build a complete end-to-end -end application, which is exactly what we're doing, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. So the spreadsheet you're looking at is some data that I faked for a, a, um, a, a fictional guitar shop called Jason's Guitar Shack. And the way that this exercise worked, and I've blogged about this, so I'll post a link to the blog in the description below. Um, it's a very expanded cutter, and it's a much more kind of open-ended um, TDD cutter in the sense that you're not given a set of firm requirements like you would with, say, the Mars Rover Cat or the Roman numerals converter. Instead, you're presented with a simple business problem, the problem being that we keep running out of stock and therefore losing sales on some of our best-selling products. And they're asked to imagine and design and start developing the simplest system possible that they believe might solve this problem or at least reduce the, uh, the problem, reduce the amount of sales that we're losing. So they've been working on that. We've done um, a couple of sessions on that. And we're going to continue with that example because it's bringing out a whole bunch of questions over the six hours we've done so far. And we're going to do maybe spend maybe 15 hours on this. So that's like a couple of days work to build this simple system. Um, I've been creating in the downtime that I've had um, some simple web services. So you can see here in Excel, I'm a bit of an Excel whiz. Um, and if you're a developer, I highly recommend getting to grips with Excel, because it is great for faking this kind of test data. So you'll see here, I've got all this test data, some of it's randomized and et cetera, et cetera, that I faked here. Thousands of sales going back two years, two years worth of sales over for a, a, a select bunch of products from our guitar shop. And um, what I've done on the side there is here's a, here's a cheap and cheerful alternative to a database, is I've written a little bit of, a little formula here to actually generate some JavaScript code to generate a JavaScript object, essentially. So we create an object for each of these rows in our, in our table here. And then I just copy and paste all of that 
into a JavaScript file, and then um, that becomes part of a very simple AWS Lambda. So a very simple web service that they can, can query sales for products over certain date ranges and so on and so forth and get totals. So very, very quick to knock up, just took me a morning. Um, um, but this kind of thing that I'm doing now, we normally don't get a chance to do on the training course because time is very tight. We're always moving on. So the training courses are great value and they're great for introducing people to these ideas, but they are a jumping off point. And my hope is always, and I always discuss this with clients, that they will then go on to invest more seriously in coaching for developers, either from me or one of my associates. Now, let's be honest, there aren't that many companies who are willing to make that kind of long-term investment, and it's always delightful when they do, because you get to work with people in much more depth, you get to know them more, you get to see their code, and etc., etc., etc. You You used to get to see where they work, these days you get to see their spare bedroom or their kitchen, um, so it's much more it's much more rewarding in many ways because you can feel that you're having a bigger impact and this particular client seemed very happy at the moment after the the the, the four sessions that we've done so far. Um, so I just expand on this example we're doing. So the intention originally was this was going to be like a one week thing just to introduce the idea of specification by example and also the idea of. Um, uh, designing software to solve problems rather than just delivering lists of features. But it went very well, and I thought, okay, this is an, this is an interesting problem. It's kind of realistic, but it's also very simple and self-contained. Re um, really, they, they're only designing the one feature that we're test driving, uh, but it's got some nice little wrinkles in it that make it more interesting. But what I've decided is we're going to expand on that. So I'm creating these web services that are going to pretend to be these external systems for our stock and for our sales. Um, and at some point we're gonna to get to the sort of the back end of their core logic, and we're gonna to need to actually connect to these web services. So then we can talk about integration tests and contract tests and all that great stuff. Um, and there are many, many companies out there I think that would benefit from contract tests. That will be the subject of next week's video diary entry, I think. Um, but also I've decided we're gonna take this further because they've been asking about, ah, but what about our user interface? Because they're designing uh, mobile apps uh, and they are notoriously difficult to unit test um, so we're gonna we're gonna sort of put a UI on this thing and we're gonna turn these into mobile apps and the sales information the sort of the trigger for their logic which is a sale of a, a guitar or whatever it, that is we sell the sale of a product um, originally we're going to make it all server based but I thought you know what let's make it an app and then maybe we'll have our maybe our create a fake message queue that they can pull this data off, they can poll to see if there have been any sales. So it's going to be a complete little system with a user interface and some external dependencies and message queues and other stuff going on. So simple enough to do in a few sessions, but complex enough to hopefully get us into the more in-depth end-to-end stuff that, that really we don't have time to get to in, in, a, in a short exercise. So. If you've got developers and you've been thinking about CodeCraft training, I highly recommend you have a discussion internally about what kind of investment you're willing to make. Um, training is great. Training is great, especially for building teams and for introducing people to ideas and getting them fired up. And then some of those people will go away and they'll read up and they'll, they'll take it further from there, but some of them won't. Um, and so your investment in training, although it's gonna be a lot smaller and a lot quicker as well, it's not going to have the same impact as long-term coaching. So this coaching program that we're doing for my client at the moment is uh, initially 10 weeks. It is essentially, to all intents and purposes, the Codemanship Codecraft course, but it's being delivered much more intensively with much more time um, to actually get into the nitty-gritty of it all and a lot more attention from me or whoever happens to be coaching. So... Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, it's a much bigger investment. Um, but I, I think it's really, really worth it. On those occasions where I've managed to engage with the client long term with coaching as well as training, it's always had a far bigger impact, not just on those individual developers and on their teams, but on the organization as a whole, because it, it means that I get to interact with the organization a lot more. Um, so highly worth thinking about. But if you don't have that budget, I've published, as, as you'll see in the description below, 
I've published a description of the, the, the beginning part of this exercise. I'm going to update that on a regular basis to add the new parts, like the external dependencies and stuff. Um, I probably won't let you use my um, web services because I, I don't particularly want to pay any money for it, for hosting it. So, But I'll probably give you the code. So if you want to knock up your own AWS Lambdas or Azure stuff or whatever, then you're very welcome to do that. So eventually... I'll be publishing the exercise as a whole as a sort of a, a, a thing that you can maybe run for yourselves if you have 10% time or 20% time. And the intention is it's something that you could do every week that would take maybe, you, you know, 10 to 15 hours to complete. Um, and it would get you far deeper into TDD and outside NTD and using stubs and mocks and working with external dependencies and TDD and user interfaces and working with customers I think it might be the first TDD cutter that has a customer um, rather than a set of requirements. Um, so there's a lot of really good stuff there to get your teeth into. So I highly recommend taking a look. OK, that's it for me. Sorry it's been a while. I will try to be less of a stranger. I'm going to try and do one of these every weekend if I can. Um, so I hope you're staying safe. Um, again, these are very challenging times um but um you know take care of yourselves and uh, keep on coding <laughs>